The Retirement Cafe Podcast, Episode 64. Getting a second bite of the cherry with Tim Drake. Retired or thinking about retirement? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe Podcast. In each episode, we bring you an important conversation with insight, tips and knowledge, all designed to help you live a fulfilling and successful life in retirement. Here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner and Accredited Later Life Advisor, Justin King. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast, which is kindly sponsored by my friends at the Timeline app. Timeline is a state-of-the-art retirement income planning software that helps financial planners like me bring your retirement journey to life and answer your big retirement income questions. I am really pleased to be joined today by Tim Drake, one of our previous podcast guests, Dominique Afajan, who appeared in episode 53 and published her book, Boulder, Life Lessons from People Older and Wiser Than You, told me all about Tim. Tim appears in her book as one of the most inspiring people over 70, who she believes makes older age look far more appealing. I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Tim, which is part of our series on working into retirement. Now, Tim relaunched his career in his 50s when he lost everything due to the recession. Now in his mid-70s, Tim has co-founded and run businesses, think tanks and charities. He's published a number of books, including Generation Cherry, powerful strategies to give you another bite of the cherry. So here's my conversation with Tim Drake. So Tim, um, for those who, uh, obviously there's a little bit of a synopsis there, but (laughs) tell me a little bit about about your story and and how you've got to where you've got to. Um, My background is I was mainly a sportsman. I played rugby for Cambridge University and Harlequins and London Irish. And I then went into advertising, which I loved. I then set up a business with a colleague selling sports shoes, the first one in the UK called Cobra Sports, fantastic, successful, 14 years of joy, after which we hit a brick wall. There was a recession. Our bank went bust. Mm. Um, God knows what else happened as well. Anyway, I was ended up with virtually nothing, a pound in my pocket, no salary, <clears throat> no pension, no nothing, and to start again. And it was kind of been my 50s, and it was the best thing that ever happened in the end. I mean, it was pretty traumatic at the time, but um, it was phenomenal. My family were wonderful. We used to go. I had a very strict rule that I would not work after six o'clock any night. And we sat around the kitchen table and we watched Homer Simpson. We all laughed together and it was fantastic. And Homer Simpson basically saved my life. I stayed <laughs> sane. It was terrific. So, and from there, I went on to, I set up a whole load of businesses. I did different things. I did think tanks. I do speaking. I do Charity, I do, you know, a whole range. I love it. I have a mixture of kind of charity, money earning, um, interest creating. Um, I'm always busy, but not stressed most of the time. So, and I love it. So I'm now 75. And to me, this is a joyously extended middle age, not the beginning of old age. Wow. wow. I still run. I play tennis. I go swimming. I do all, everything. So I'm keeping going. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, well, just take me back to this because I, I think when when you had to kind of sit there and go, what am I going to do next? You know, you had two young children, and um, did. you know that that must have been a bit of <laughs> must have been a bit, a was, bit of a, a wake up call. What, what, what? It certainly was. Yeah, it was suddenly everything had kind of ground to a halt, and I had to start from nowhere, <clears throat> which was bloody good for me in a way. I mean. Because you think you've got all these kind of talents, but you don't. You do, but they're hidden. And you've got to kind of dig deep. And I say it's the best thing that happened to me. It was horrible at the time, I cannot tell you. But yeah, yeah. it is just when you dig yourself out of a hole, you feel a lot better about yourself and your life. So tell me, uh, tell me about the process that you went through at that moment in time. Because, I mean, you know, this is, um, you know, this is a proper hero story. So tell me, you know, you're sat there going, okay, the business is gone. What do I do next? Well, what I did, I, because I worked in advertising, and in those days, in advertising, it didn't have planners. It had, had suits, we were called, account executives, who did all the marketing. And I used to be a marketer, and I loved it. So I used to do gap analyses and that sort of thing. So I sat down again and said, 
where is there a gap in the market? That's what I had with Cobra Sports, which is that at the time there were no retailers in the UK selling sports shoes. Right. It was obviously a growing market. It was happening in the States with Nike. We were the first one to open. We built a 40 odd, 42 shops across the country. It was terrific. And we had a very unusual thing because all our shop staff were graduates because they wanted to have an articulate service career, which they loved and they grew. And it went very well. And we still have reunions 25 years later. Right. You know, so something must have worked. So I sat down again and did a gap analysis, what was there. And one of the things was there was um, a, an opportunity for chief executives in the whole supply chain to talk to each other over dinner with an outside speaker to rattle the cage. And the reason for that was that they could then, because they were with enemies, they couldn't be a cartel, but they had to think in bigger terms about the industry rather than just last week's figures and how, how they get the bigger discount out of their customers and all that stuff. So yeah. suddenly, and it was just great. So we had Nike, Adidas, all that lot, joined the style, st- still going 25 years later, even bigger. Wow. We had a meeting last week at Red Bull. Phenomenal. I had 30 people there. Just great. So I love it because I, I learn as well as meet nice people, interesting people, and it's kind of a win-win all around. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, you're a busy guy. Where, where, where are you finding, you know, this, this most recent book, I think, Generation Cherry, Retire, Redundant, Rethink, um, Powerful Strategies to Give You a Second Bite of the Cherry. When did you find the time to do this? Well, it's interesting. I'm writing another book at the moment, and it's, it's difficult finding time, I have to say. Um, just that I, I felt... I had a message because, um, you know, there are a lot of people around like us and there is so much opportunity out there if you stay plugged in. And the, the whole book is about the, the cherry idea is that we, our generation had a cherry on everything. We were, jobs had pensions, there were plenty of jobs. You couldn't go wrong, really. I mean, the whole thing was set up for us. Now the cherry is shriveled a hell of a lot um, and we've got to kind of duck and dive a bit. And that's good for us, really. Um, and it's, it, you can't, if you don't give up but keep going, you actually enjoy it more and more. And a bit of challenge is, is good for you. Yeah. And I know you're, you're a big fan of, of, of staying in work of some kind. Yes. Maybe not full time, but, yeah. but, but staying, as you say, plugged in. So tell me, tell me about that. Well, it, it doesn't matter. Don't, don't think of it in terms of if you want a job, get a job. But, you know, second careers are fine, particularly if they're in the kind of charity industry, you can add your value there in a big way. But my feeling is if you stay engaged in work of some kind, even if it's half a day a week, you've got a skin in the game. If your children are talking to you about work and money, you know what you're talking about. You're not talking as a spectator, knowing nothing. I mean, I remember my father, who was a lovely man, um, kept giving me money for petrol when I went and see him at weekends. And it wouldn't even have covered a, a teaspoonful of petrol. So he was so out of touch with what money was. So, and he, as I say, I loved him dearly, but I was very keen not to get in that situation, to, to stay engaged, stay plugged in, have skin in the game, and, it's, and, it's, and it works. Yeah. And it also keeps you, you hold your brain going in a big way. Because if you don't, you, you start solidifying, which again throws into the other, because the whole book is about autonomy, taking control of your life, which involves the whole thing about learning, autonomy, giving, growing, learning, you know, you, you, all, all fronts are being developed. And if you're not earning, I don't, you, you lose the will to do anything, really. Why, why shouldn't you just go and play golf and have coffee? Sure, sure. Some people do, yeah. Good luck to them. But I mean, it's not for me. No, no, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious about this whole message around uh, your thoughts about unreleased potential. You know, yes, the, the, yeah. tell, me, tell me more about that. My, my, I've always felt I've got potential. I'm still a promising youngster. That's how I see myself. Um, and that really, sh- I think everybody should look at themselves in that way because none of us have got anywhere near, well, some have, obviously. If you're Mandela or someone, you've done quite a good few things in your life. But most of us have done bugger all in comparison to what we could do, either in the charity field or in um, good works or in business or whatever. I mean, there's so much we could be doing. In the you know, good brief. You know, the current situation in kind of social care and government and what's not happening and should be happening, there's so much to get involved in. I was involved in prisons for 20 years, and I learned more talking to prisoners than I ever did talking to prison officers or policemen or anybody else. 
there's always time to learn, and it's interesting. And that's really what the whole book's about and what I think potential is about, because you've always got an opportunity to learn more and give more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I think um, I think you're right. I do hear that. And um, uh, the, and and as well, longevity gets you know uh, longer. I suppose like the whole <laughs> word longevity is you know us living longer. You know, we're, we're talking about hundred year lives now, aren't we? And yeah. you know, the, the, there's there's still a, a massive time frame, isn't there? Um, oh, there is indeed. The yeah. classic, from yeah. the classic retirement age of sixty five, which is li- ridiculous. But I think that it's also about self-worth and identity and all those things. There's a very interesting um, German research thing which came through saying that people who were unemployed in their 60s and then became pensioners had a fantastic increase in self-esteem because suddenly their title was, I'm retired, rather than being I'm out of work. And this is important, I think. Self-esteem is a crucial thing through life for all of us. And... If you keep working, your self-esteem stays high because you know you're giving back. You know you're learning yourself. You're meeting interesting people. You're giving back. You're paying tax. You've got so many things going for you that um, I think you know, you've got to be honest. I mean, self-esteem, we all need self-esteem. And I think being active in middle, late age is crucial to actually contribute and give back so you have self-esteem and respect yourself and your kids respect you and your you know, everybody you know does, because you respect yourself. It's the people who kind of start collapsing inwards, doing less and less, getting less and less involved, and learning less and less, you know, because our brains do shrivel a bit. I mean, I'm, even I have a shriveling brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I do TED lectures, I do all that stuff, I read books, and I love it. I go to, go to um, conferences, and again, getting going to conferences is brilliant. I mean, I pay with my own money because you learn stuff, you meet people. It's interesting, the stuff that's you know, going on. But if you just give up and retire, I mean, go to the golf club and have gin and tonics, it's, that's not, not me, I'm afraid. No, no. And so let's say that you have got to, a, you, you may be in a mindset, you know, you, you are reaching your retirement age and you're feeling pretty knackered maybe. You know, you've done 40 years at the, at the mill, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, 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 you, and you are waiting to kind of get out of the job. You know, it's not, it's not as fulfilling as it may be first yeah, to be, yeah. et cetera. And you're looking, you're looking forward to that, you know, long holiday. Um, yeah. what, what do you say to these guys? What do you say to them? I think it's very strange. The people who, I totally agree with people taking six months off, traveling and, you know, really enjoying life, but then get back into it because all I'm sure you're aware of, the statistics of people dying soon after they retired are very, very high because mm. they're just they're out, of it, out of it, aren't they? They've got no interest in life, no self-respect, no self-esteem. They're not contributing, so they're kind of not even in the game. And that is, you know, you, you either, I think you're, you're growing or you're dying, basically. Um, so I think keep, keep growing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I suppose some people might think, well, okay, well, you know, I haven't really got skills that, um, you know, that anyone else wants or needs, and I, I don't want to be pushing trolleys at, 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 for a you know well any one of supermarkets type of thing. You know, <coughs> I, I really I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm going to do. What, what, what's your what's your thoughts? Well, there? there's two things. One is I think pushing trolleys for half a day a week. You learn, you'd meet young people, you meet customers, and you get a lot out of it, frankly, and have a few laughs. And that's the great thing that people like us can bring is the kind of soft skills that younger people don't have. So humor is one of them. Yeah. You know, making people laugh, particularly in a tough situation in a supermarket, and there's, you can imagine the angst of someone who can't, in, well, we've all been there. Yeah. But if you can bring humor and humanity in, I think it's a real gift and it's worth giving and, it, and it's worth enjoying. Because all the research shows that people who give live longer, are happier, they are less obese, um, they live you know, more healthy lives. It's incredible. The, I'll give you one thing to do this week. Or the end of this week, by the end of the week, go onto Google and put in the health benefits of giving. And you'll be reading for the rest of the day. I mean, it's just phenomenal. All the research shows yeah. that givers get more out of it than receivers and they're healthier and happier and they're more contented. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, we have lots of people that we've spoken to, clients of ours who are now in the volunteer sector. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
and and are doing are doing roles that are very different to what they're yeah. really doing in the corporate world. You know, we've got a client of ours. Um, I'm sure he listens to the podcast, but he now um, he he now drives um, a minibus, taking taking brilliant. You know, brilliant. Uh, taking folk who can't get to the hospital and stuff. You know, and uh, and they're great. Yeah, terrific. He loves it. He loves yeah, exactly, it exactly, and they love it because he's relaxed. He's mature. You know, he's not a kind of spotty youth. He's a, it's just a win-win all around. Yeah, yeah. And I think people can be surprised that um, uh, at this transferable skills that they've got. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and the humanity they've got too and the, and the lessons they learn through life. Yeah. It's all there, those skills. skills. Yeah. Just bring them out and enjoy them. Now, now, something you, I, I read on your website that is quite close to my heart because I do quite a lot of exercise myself. Um, uh, and I think we may be in the same camp, but I, I swim quite a lot and I appreciate that you do as well. But I'm not really. No, I hate it. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> it is so boring. It is the most appalling thing. I, any other sport I can do, I can chase the ball forever. Yeah. But swimming is just dull. I, 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 do, I do swim two or three times a week, a few thousand meters and <laughs> Um, uh, luckily I live next to the sea so uh, I, I was in the oh, sea well, last week I was in the sea last week and um, it's still pretty chilly at this time okay, of year but, yeah. wow. <laughs> but uh, I do find it still a little bit more uh, stimulating than up oh, and down yeah. a swimming pool you know yeah I, oh god damn, yeah I can I do a th- I do a kilometer I'm sure you do the same sort of thing and we have a pool we have a place in France and it's an 11 meter pool and it's about 100 lengths to do a, <laughs> Jesus you can't even consider it. I mean, it's just so boring. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I agree with you. Swimming in the sea, it's but a bit of adventure, isn't it? A bit of risk. Yeah. yeah. Of but of course, fishing. you know, the, as we all know, the, the, there is, you know, keeping yourself moving and um, is oh, one, yeah. one of the greatest things you can do to, for, for your longevity. And, yeah. and, for, and for a full, a full um, later life, if you want to call it that um, era, but whatever it is, it's... Um, you want to be fit and capable of yeah, all no, no question, yeah. Yeah, I did, I did the first four London marathons, which were, for me, because I was a bloody rugby forward, it was hard work, but it was, it, it was so worthwhile. And it was so moving. I mean, I cannot tell you. The interplay with the crowd was just, and the four of us ran together, all crying by the end. It was just fantastic. Fantastic. Was, yeah. so, so, Tim, tell me, um, 2000 and 2020, what does it hold for you? Well, I hope another book will be published in May, which would be great. Um, and I'm going to do one or two other things, probably travel a bit more, um, but keep going as I do. I, I, I'm going to keep running, keep playing tennis, keep swimming occasionally, try not to be bored. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, I just, I, I, I think we are so blessed, most of us, that we can have a bit of a choice in our later years in what we do. And I, I love the think tanks I do. Just, you know, we had a wonderful one this week, Red Bull. Red Bull, an extraordinary brand. And they founded this phenomenal charity which deals with spinal injuries and the stuff they've done there. It's just so inspiring and uplifting. Now, if I weren't involved in, you know, think tanks and business, I'd have missed all that. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. It's great. Great privilege. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, so it's been it's been thoroughly brilliant chatting to you, and I uh, I feel very inspired to uh, to listen to your energy. At uh, did you say you're seventy four? Five. Yeah, seventy five. Seventy five. Well, it's fantastic and um, really really good. If you'd like to find out more about Tim and the work he's doing, or get in touch with him directly, check out the show notes on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk, where you'll find all those useful links. To listen to the first episode in this series on working into retirement, head to our website and search for episode 63 with Stuart Lewis. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do leave a review on iTunes to help more people like you discover us. It really does help. You can also subscribe via iTunes or your preferred podcast player so you never miss an episode. Thanks once again to the Timeline app for sponsoring the podcast. And until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Cafe podcast with Justin King. To find out more, you can find us online at theretirementcafe.co.uk. 